If I could give my 17 year old self writing advice, what would it be? I think I can come up with a few things. If you don't know me, I'm Octavia D. Mason, giving you the best practical writing tips, resources to build a strong novel, and confidence to write your story. Without further delay, let's get to the things I learned after writing my second novel. Let's go. Writing a book can be hard. Don't let anyone tell you differently. But it is also quite satisfying and well worth it. When I fell in love with fictional writing at the age of 17, I never imagined nine years later that I would be at novel number two and about to embark on a fantasy book series. Honestly, I just thought that I had a great story idea that would be really cool as a book. I loved and still love superpowers and the impossible becoming reality. And lo and behold, I've written a time travel romance, The Group, and I've written a college fantasy, which is book one of my new fantasy series, The Kingdom of Light. As I've written and published a collection of poetry and two novels, I've learned a lot of things along the way. But for the sake of time, I'll only give you the few things, a few of the things that I've learned after writing my second novel. Here it goes. The first thing I learned after writing my second novel is perfection is overrated. I know, I know. We writers want everything to be just right from the book title all the way to chapter 32's second paragraph, sentence number three, to be absolutely perfect. But just as in life, we strive for perfection. We aren't always perfect in all that we do. And to be frank, trying to force perfection can be very tiring. I can't tell you how many times I have freaked out over my chapter headings. Should they be numerical or should they be spelled out? That alone can take 30 minutes of your time. And y'all know, grammatical errors can be a doozy. You've edited your book you don't know how many times and then you send it to your editors and then it's off to get published. And oh, looky looky here. You see a misspelled word that makes you think you sound like a preschooler who is learning how to spell for the first time. And let's not forget about formatting your novel. All of my self-publishers out there know what I'm talking about. Even with the beauty that is Scrivener, formatting a book can be hard. So with all this on your plate, not to mention the actual writing of the story, what do you do about making your book perfect? Don't. Yes, write the best. Research the best. Write your book the best way you know how. But don't get caught in the sticky web that is perfection. Even the most popular books in the world have grammatical errors, something my sister consistently tells me. So don't get bogged down when something doesn't go the way you expect it. Hey, it just may work out in your favor. The second thing I learned after writing my second novel is lean on your support. A little <laughs> lean on your support. For me, my faith in God is my main driving force. And then I have my sister and my mom and my friend who continue to push me to write. If I didn't have them in my corner, I wouldn't be where I am today. But Octavia, what if I don't have any support? If you find yourself without any support for your writing journey, here are two ways to find it. Number one, look online. I'm going to be transparent here. I'm 26, right? So it's fair to say that someone my age should be aware of all things social media and even enjoy perusing the social media platforms. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about Octavia D. Mason. I used to hate all things social media and I disliked it. And when I say disliked, I'm talking nose turned up. I think this is stupid and dumb, dislike. But eventually I realized that my dislike of social media came from a fear of putting myself out there as Octavia D. Mason and as an author. And once I took that step out there, I found the hashtag writing community on Twitter. And if you're looking for writing advice and support and writing tips, Twitter gives you that. But not only that, they are real people who want what you want, confidence to write their story. The second way to find support for your writing journey is number two. Find the support within yourself. The cheerleaders on the sideline won't matter if you don't have belief in yourself. And this goes for life as well as it goes for writing. Trust in you, in your gifting, in your talent to write. 
and believe that you have a story that's worth sharing to the world. And then finally, write it. And in your search for support, don't just go anywhere to find it. My lovely writers, the right support matters. The I want you to succeed support matters. That kind of support encourages you to keep writing. It encourages you to put pen to paper. It encourages you to bring your story to life. The third thing I learned after writing my second novel is patience is indeed a virtue. This is a big one for some of y'all. Y'all know who I'm talking about. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's definitely you. Writing a book is sort of like learning how to ride a bike without training wheels for the first time. You're going to fall. You might get frustrated. You are going to want to be the champ the first time you put your feet to the petals. But in order to be the fastest kid on the block, you're gonna have to practice patience. That's how it is with writing, editing, and publishing. There will be challenges and you will want it to be done as soon as possible. But writing and each step of writing takes time and requires patience. And when you practice patience, the process becomes easier. The fourth thing I learned after writing my second novel is stress replaces the joy of writing and publishing. When you're a self-publisher, the ball is always in your court. Sure, you can pass the figurative basketball to your cover designer and your editors, but at the end of the day, the shot is still yours to shoot. This of itself can be stressful. I found myself many a times freaking out over not making the deadlines I've set for myself, over making sure that every sentence, paragraph, and chapter are absolutely perfect, and wondering if my book will ever sell or be well received by others. But do you know where all of this worrying got me at the end of the day? I can't say that it didn't get me anywhere because it did. I ended up in a little place called Stressville. You know the one I'm talking about right next to Doubt City, right by Panictopia. This isn't me saying that along your writing journey, you should avoid all stressful things and that you will never ever encounter any stressful things. But what I am asking is, what will be your response when the stressful situations pop up? Will you succumb to your worrisome thoughts? doubt your ability to write or freak out because something didn't go as planned. My lovely writers, this writing journey of ours is a unique one. It is one filled with worlds created by imagination and of stories drawn from experiences and we get to share it all with our readers. But how much fun would this writing journey of ours be if we choose to be stressed about it all? Not too fun. Regardless of if it is with your storytelling or with your publishing, instead of responding to unprecedented situations with stress, do what you can to fix the issue and enjoy the journey. I know I started this video saying that if I could give my 17 year old self writing advice, what would it be? And a few years ago, I did actually entertain the idea of giving my teenage self writing advice. But as I published a collection of poetry and as I published two novels, I'm glad I didn't know then what I know now. <sighs> but Octavia, how dare you say such things? But hold on, let me finish. Though I've had to learn how to navigate Amazon, Kindle's direct publishing system, figure out how to bring a book together story-wise and formatting-wise, and learned and I'm still learning the best way to market my book, I must say I wouldn't change how I made it to this point in my writing career. Every challenge, every obstacle that has come before me has made me more persistent in getting my books out there to my readers. And it has made me realize that writing is more than a passion for me. It's a calling from God. And if I haven't learned all that I have over these years, I wouldn't be sitting before you lovely writers today, giving you the best practical writing tips, resources to build a strong novel, and confidence to write your story. See what I did there? These, my lovely writers, are the things that I have learned after writing my second novel. But before we head out, let me give you the practical writing tip of the day. Are you ready? Writing is a journey unlike any other. Walk at your own pace and don't forget to take in the view as you go. 
Hey my lovely people, I hope you enjoyed this video on the things I learned after writing my second novel. If you've published a novel yourself, let me know in the comments below the things that you've learned. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my practical writing tips playlist right here on this channel. As always, if you love this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want more content just like this, be sure to check out all my other videos on practical writing tips and writing prompts. And be sure to hit that notification bell for weekly videos just like this one. And head on over to my website at OctaviaDMason.com to receive freebies, writing resources, and more writing tips. Again, I'm Octavia D. Mason, giving you the best practical writing tips, resources to build a strong novel, and confidence to write your story. See you in the next video. Peace.